All right, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to a round of your favorite beverage and questions. What's today's topic? Let's talk about Harbor Freight's 45 amp plasma cutter again. Several videos. But you'll learn from doing this. So I did those first cuts at 95. Then I came back right between 110 and 115 PSI, and I repeated those cuts. Now, when you get past that 33, that's the 100% duty cycle part, and you start hitting that 40, 45, or anywhere in between, you got to give the machine a little bit of a rest, just a tiny bit of a rest to kind of catch up. Or you could end up tripping a breaker, or the unit can just pause on you. So 33, like I said, 100% duty cycle. So you can see here on the 33, when I got to... Here's the 33, and here's, of course, you know, the 45. It didn't do too bad. When I got... When I got over here to 25 at that 110, 115, it made a nice, clean cut. Not a lot of slag or buildup. Same thing on that 33 and the same thing on the 45. And you'll see over here, a couple of these got a little bit wider of a cut. Not a big deal if you're cutting, you know, sheet metal, kind of artsy kind of projects and stuff like that. Could be different if you're cutting through, like let's say a piece of angle iron or a thicker piece of steel. So, the amperage is important. It's what's probably going to give you that burn through but what's a little bit more important is that you have that PSI set, okay? And so we know you gotta be at 95, like I said. 110, 115, you could go up a little bit more. But for 18 gauge sheet metal, this thing cut beautifully, and you can see these lines as proof. I'm gonna zoom in here in a second. Now, you don't... Second, now... You don't want to go too high. You don't just crank this thing up to 200. You know, I've got a big 80 gallon Ingersoll RAN compressor and 3 8 hose, but you don't want to crank this thing all the way up. You could damage some parts internally by having too much PSI going into the machine. So you can adjust this. Now I go through well, like an Astro regulator where I can walk over and I can fine tune and tweak it. I know this is a crude experiment, but my point in the video is if you have one of these, no matter what plasma cutter you have, I even did this with the hypertherm, I play around with the amperage versus the PSI. Somebody said, which one's more important? Well, the PSI I think is a little bit more important, but you do have to have the amperage set correctly. Now, on this 20 amp, had I gone at a slower rate in terms of how fast I'm moving through the cut, if I went slower, it would have cut all the way through without a problem at 20 amps. It would have done it easily. And the PSI was 95, so I could have done it by going at a much slower, but because I was going a little bit quicker rate of speed, you begin to understand now the differences on how to set amperage versus PSI. Okay, those are my thoughts. I know that this is kind of just a quick tip, little kind of a video, and it pretty much pertains to the titanium plasma cutter, but the same concept is going to apply to all plasma cutters. It does even on my hypertherm. I had the lower end one and I had the 45. Still, it's the same thing. You know, you end up tweaking the amperage and you end up tweaking that PSI depending on, you know, what you're cutting and you can get a nice clean cut because somebody had made the comment, oh, there's too much slag, the cuts look like crap, this, that, the other. Okay, well, in the forum, you're not giving me enough information, but I'll bet you, had you played around with the settings, you can get these nice clean cuts like I did. Okay, so I hope all of this helps you. I hope it gives you a better understanding. Plasma cutting can be a lot of fun. I'm going to do another one or two videos on uh, the plasma cutter because I'm having a really good time cutting out large pieces out of sheet metal, yard art for people, and uh, you know I'll share them with everybody. Those are my thoughts. I'm the Home Handyman. I hope you click subscribe. I hope you keep following me. Know of something better? Drop it in the comment below. Um, I don't own all these different types of plasma machines. I'm sure that there's others out there that are just as good or some of them that are better. Somebody said, well, Hypertherm's a standard and Hey Miller's good and Lotus and Everlast and I don't own any of those. And actually, you know, Justin's the one that actually owns the machine, but he was nice enough to let me use it for as long as I want. Anyway, folks, 
That's it. I will see you on the next video. You have a great day. Bye-bye.